In the last unit, we took a look at how reactants turn into products. What are the reactants? What are the products? How much reactant do you need to make how much product? We drew an arrow in, but we really didn't talk about it all that much. What is this arrow? It's called the mechanism, the reaction mechanism. It's a series of steps that the reaction takes. If you're cooking from a recipe, then the arrow represents all the steps that you do to your ingredients over the course of the recipe. You have your ingredients list, you have what you're going to finally make, makes four servings, and these are the directions on how you get from one to the other. So the mechanism is the series of steps that are required to complete the reaction. To take your ingredients and go through some kind of process until you get your finished product. Now in all chemical reactions, the following steps are going to take place. Step one, in order for chemicals to react, their particles have to collide with each other. Because if they don't collide, there's not going to be a reaction. What do I mean by effective collision? I mean it has to have enough speed. The particles have to be moving fast enough. Why? Because when they collide, they have to mess up with their electrons. Maybe they'll share electrons, maybe they'll lose or gain but it takes energy for this to happen. What do you call that energy? Activation energy. A match needs two chemicals to react. The chemical on the tip of the match and the chemical on the strip. When the two of them collide, they're going to generate heat through an exothermic reaction that causes it to burst into flame. That's called the activation energy. How hard do I have to strike it? The particles have to collide with each other fast enough. So let's see. Nope, that didn't do it. Nope, that didn't do it. Nope. Nope. Harder. Nope. Oh! There's our activation energy. So unless you give enough activation energy, unless you make the particles collide with enough force, this reaction is never going to happen. Not only do the particles have to collide with enough speed, they have to collide at the correct angle. For example, for example, if I want a molecule of HI, to react with another molecule of HI, if they don't collide in the proper manner, they're just going to bounce off each other. If they're oriented correctly, then they can combine. So enough speed and correct angle, and that's how the reacting particles can collide effectively. That's your first step. The second step is, any old bonds, if there are any, are going to break. This absorbs energy, the energy you just put into it, the activation energy. That energy goes into breaking old bonds, if there are any. After any old bonds have broken, the atoms will rearrange to form a temporary substance called an activated complex. It's kind of like what's in the oven in the middle of the process. It's not quite done, it's not quite started, it's somewhere in the middle. Activated complex. Then the activated complex breaks down and new bonds, if any do form, will form. And this releases energy when the new bonds are formed. You see, atoms are generally more stable when they're bonded with other atoms than they are when themselves. When they're by themselves, they're like, oh my god, I gotta find somebody to bond with. So they got all this energy. When they bond, then they have less energy because they've given up the valence electron that they desperately want to give up, or they've taken on a valence electron that they desperately want to take on. So when a new bond forms, it releases energy. Some example mechanisms. Carbon and oxygen need to collide first in order for this to happen. Step one, if there are any old bonds, they're going to break. Are there any bonds in our reactants? Yes, the bonds between the oxygens has got to break. That's first. Now, the carbon can combine with one of those oxygens and that's going to form the activated complex CO. That activated complex will react with the second oxygen to form our final product CO2. Notice what happens. The O that was formed gets used up. The O that was formed gets used up. The intermediate CO gets used up. To give us our final reaction, C plus O2 forms CO2. In this reaction, we have to break the bonds before we can do anything else. So the first step is 
the H2's bonds have to break to form H plus H. The I2's bonds have got to break to form I plus I. So that's the first step. Old bonds break. When old bonds break, new bonds can form. This H and this I come together to form HI. Then this H and that I can come together to form the second of the two HIs. We make two H's, we use this H up here, we use that H up there. We make two I's, two I's. We use this I up there, we use that I up there. So the net reaction is H2 plus I2 forms two HIs. And that's the possible mechanism for this reaction. Of course, there's no way of knowing for sure what the mechanism is unless you actually do the experiment. This is kind of like a hypothetical situation. Now, not all of these steps take the same amount of time. Just like when you're cooking, not all the steps take the same amount of time. Usually when you're cooking, what takes the most amount of time is the baking time. Unless, of course, you're doing something like grilling that doesn't take all that long. When you're cooking, whichever step takes the longest is going to determine how long it takes you to do that recipe. For example, if it takes you five minutes to mix together the ingredients and then two hours to bake it, it takes about two hours for the whole process to happen. Therefore, the slowest step is going to determine how fast the reaction takes place. It's called the rate determining step. So, for example, if step one takes 0.013 seconds, if step two takes 0.314 seconds, if step three takes 596.2 seconds, if step four takes 0.000019 seconds, which of these steps is going to determine overall how fast the reaction happens? The rate determining step. The slowest step. If you could somehow figure out a way to eliminate that step, you could go from about 596 seconds to under a third of a second. How do we eliminate steps? That's the job of a, oh, but I can't tell you that yet. You'll have to watch the next video.